Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and I've got something really exciting to show you today. In the 9.0 update of World of Tanks, the much-anticipated historical battles will be released in its first iteration. Now, I just released this in a forum post on World of Tanks EU, but I thought I'd try and go into it in a bit more detail for you guys in a video. So firstly, I'll tell you what we know, and then I'll probably try and expand on that with what I kind of hope the game mode evolves into, and other things that I'm really looking forward to. So the historical game mode is going to be selectable from the top of your garage. It's going to be a lot like the 742 game mode, and you're not going to be able to currently play in a platoon in the historical battles. Now, the reason why I believe that they're doing that is because, as you're going to find out later, and oh no, spoilers, spoilers, there is going to be matchmaker balancing based on every tank. And one of the important things of the historical battles is that they're going to try and link up tanks of different tiers and sometimes you're going to have less tanks than the enemy team. But the tanks that you have are going to be bigger. But I'll get onto that more later. So after you've chosen the game mode, you will be able to choose between three historical battles. So this suggests that the battle that you get to choose is not random. So you're going to be able to either choose Lake Balaton, the Battle of Kursk, or the Ardennes Offensive. Now, two of these maps are Erlenberg, so wow, you, you better like Erlenberg, and one of them is Prokhorovka. Obviously, Germany is involved in each of the battles, two of them against the Soviets, and one of them against the Americans. Now, let's look at Lake Balaton as an example. The Soviets have the IS available, the T-34, the T-3485, the ISU-152, the SU-100, and the SU-76, whereas the Germans have the Stug, the Tiger II, the Panther, the Panzer IV, the Jagdtiger, and the Jagdpanther. Kursk, the top tier tank, is going to be tier 7 on the Soviet side, and tier 8 on the German side. Whereas for the Ardennes offensive, the Americans' top tier tank will be the Hellcat, and the Germans will be the Jagdpanther. Oh, wait a minute, they're going to have the Tiger II. Wow, Tiger II versus tier 6 tanks, that's going to be very interesting. So I'm going to touch more on this in a second, so don't panic, I'm not leaving it there. I'd just like to highlight that you will clearly be able to see which tanks in your garage are available for the historical battle, as the ones that aren't are greyed out, and the ones that are available will be lit up. Also, if you want to learn more about the battle itself, you can find that in a historical reference section. And I think that's a great thing, it's linking World of Tanks more into history. If you watched my Tiger Rant video, you'll have heard that I, I, my interest in World of Two, specifically armor from World of Two, because I, I didn't love World of Two or Two, because obviously it's like a terrible part of our history, but from, but from an interest point of view, I think it's a fascinating part of our history. And so I think the fact that they're linking it in directly to historical battles will add just an extra degree of tangibility and hopefully like a tiny bit of role play into it, but not kind of like scary role play. Like waving guns at each other or whatever. You know, just a bit of light-hearted roleplay, which just makes the game all that little bit more exciting. So interestingly, there are going to be three different game modes for each of the historical battles. Standard battle, assault, and encounter. I'm not sure if these are going to be able to be turned off. Just like, for example, you can't turn off assault in tank companies. You're probably not going to be able to turn off assault in historical battles, but again, that's just my feeling in it. That's not confirmed. Now, you're going to be able to use your regular tank crews in the historical battles. But interestingly, the ammunition loadouts are going to work differently. You are not going to be able to customize your ammunition loadout for your tank. You have to buy a prepaid for set of ammunition, which you pay for up front. So, for example, this one looks like it's going to cost 26,000 credits to buy this set of ammunition for your T-34. Now, depending on how much you use will depend on how much you're refunded at the end, because anything that you don't use will be credited back to you. But that's just interesting that you're going to have to have that, those credits available up front. I think that's a really interesting characteristic for the game. I, I personally think it's brilliant. It's going to stop the people who, for example, only buy premium ammunition because they're going to run out very quickly. And it'll also mean that you have to use your premium rounds fairly intelligently. Because if you think about it, a T-34 can't really pressure a Tiger II unless it fires premium rounds. So there's going to be like a skill in deciding when it's time to actually use them. And you better make them count. I think that's a brilliant thing for the game. As as far as I'm aware, APCR rounds were available in World War II. And I might be completely speaking out of my backside here, but I believe they were in more limited quantity. And so the fact that that's kind of coming to light in historical battle is brilliant. And it's, it's really good for the gameplay, in my opinion. And if you kind of think, oh, well, now everyone's going to fire the premium ammunition. 
Or just because it's loaded in their tank doesn't mean they're actually going to use it. Because if they do fire it, they're still paying for it. Just you're paying up front and then you'll get less money back. So you're going to run out of your money quite quickly if you play like that. Also, the modules that you use on your tank are not going to be what you choose. They're going to be set a standard. In the different battles, I believe there's going to be different module loadouts. And they're going to be forced upon you to make sure that the battle is balanced. What that probably means, for example, is that let's think about the SU-152. The SU-152 in the Battle of Kursk. Maybe they're going to force the SU-152 to use the stock gun and give it very limited amounts of premium ammunition. And so then it'll literally have to do its damage with HE or fire at very lightly armored targets with its AP rounds. Or they might just go and give it the 122 millimeter. There's so much customization that Wargaming are going to have to do and I do trust them with balancing it. It's going to be very interesting to see how that all works out. But don't worry if you don't have modules unlocked for the certain tanks, because they will temporarily be installed on the vehicle for free, and then they'll be taken away at the end of the battle. So for example, say you've got a stock Tiger, and the battle that you're going into, you have the upgraded Tiger with the best gun and the best turret. Well, you can use that in that battle. So it just dawned on me that these historical battles might actually be an opportunity for you to play stock tanks fully equipped and be able to research the experience to be able to unlock them. So you might actually see that this game mode takes a lot of the stock players out of the random queue. And that'll be very interesting as well. So after you've got your set ammunition type and your set tank loadout, you're ready to go. And then what else is interesting is that the matchmaker waiting is going to be individually balanced for each tank available. And that's just fantastic. No longer will, for example, a T-29 be hammed in at the same weighting as a Tiger. Or a T-49 will be given the same weighting as an M4. Depending on their loadouts, I guess, and the battle type, they're going to be given different weightings. And then that will allow Wargaming to customize specifically for the historical battles. Because what they don't want to do is start customizing tanks that will affect the random game modes. And this just allows them so much more flexibility to be able to make the historical battles balanced without changing the other game modes. And that's really a win-win for everyone. Maybe you want to go into these historical battles, or maybe you just don't want them to affect anything in the game and you want to keep playing the random battles, then hopefully you won't have to worry because this shouldn't really affect the random queue at all. One thing that's interesting is the team composition of both teams may differ regarding the amount of vehicles and the vehicle tiers that both teams have, but the matchmaker will try and balance it. So I'm not sure how extreme this is going to be, but you might see, for example, 15 tanks versus 10 tanks. As soon as I get on the test server, we'll start testing this out. But for now, we can just kind of think about it, and it's, it's really exciting to think about. I love the idea that there's going to be that much difference in the team compositions. And then you'll have to think how you want to play the specific battle. It'll add a lot more skill into reading the enemy's team, reading your team, and putting yourself in the correct position to be able to get the most out of it. Anyway guys, that's more or less everything that I want to say about the new historical battles. They look super promising for me. I love the fact that it's going to add a complete variety to the different battles that can happen. I like the fact that the ammunition is preset. I like the fact that all the modules on the tanks are preset. What Wargaming are basically doing is constricting the variability so that hopefully they're going to be able to balance the game mode as well as possible so that we're going to be able to have the most fun with it. I like the fact that this is a completely different game mode, which means that it's not going to affect the, the random queues. And I also like the fact that at the moment you can't have platoons in it. So you can't have people who are going to go in and dominate. Obviously I'm just theorizing here, but there's very interesting opportunities for people with stock tanks who want to grind them with better modules. And I guess it's just the main thing for me is that it's going to probably add a whole nother level of variety into the game. And fair enough, they're only starting with three historical battles, but I'm pretty sure they'll expand upon this. And it's definitely going to be a hell of a lot of fun. Anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this preview. If you have, please consider rating it down below and let me know what you think about the historical battles in the comments below. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.